Well, it's another <clears throat> another Friday night here, and uh, you're gonna have to excuse the filth in my rig because uh, we still we still are in track mode here. I still got the numbers and the bugs and everything on this uh, from when I just got back. But um, basically, uh, I have a like a kind of a mods video, it just kind of generally shows what what mods this truck has done to it, and that got kind of a fair amount of views and likes and subs and all that good stuff. And so trying to uh, kind of go along those lines here and kind of stay focused on, on those things. And so um, in no particular order, um, I have uh, this pillar pod set, which um, works well and is kind of a neat setup. Um, basically, I have a boost gauge. Uh, goes up to 30 pounds. So um, obviously the stock boost gauge only goes up to 10, maybe 12, 13 if you get over it or something like that. Who cares really? But uh, this is um, basically does the full range that I'll be using anyway. <laughs> and uh, the second gauge here is fuel pressure. Obviously that um, reads the, the out, output side of the fuel pressure regulator and then that's boost reference. So when you're looking at this, if it goes up, five pounds of boost then you should get five pounds plus your base uh, fuel pressure so that's something we'll cover a little bit later I think in probably another video when we go over maybe the fuel system or something but this is the one that I um, kind of want to talk about today um, because generally uh, this video is is about how to set up a data log set system for your vehicle so um, obviously these uh, trucks are narrow band setups they don't have um, a wideband o2 sensor on it so we <clears throat> install I installed a wideband uh, sensor into the uh, basically like the mid pipe I guess you'd call it it's right after the log the log manifold and I'll show that here a little later but here is the the gauge and this is an AEM X series and this is just the one that was recommended by um, my tuner and I really do my best to try and listen to what they say because they know about this shit and I don't so um, anyway you, you this is what I got and he had uh, expressed that this is a, a good enough unit and one that he trusts and knows so the way this is wired up is this cover um, basically just goes over the original pillar um, cover that's underneath there so um, like on this side you can see I have the one with the handle well I didn't want to you know molest the the one that was already there the actual gray lightning one so I went to the junkyard found some crappy old expedition and pulled the driver's pillar off of there it's actually tan it's not even gray underneath there but you wouldn't know and so um, I took a hole saw and drilled three holes there's like one here one here and one there and uh basically those allow the wires to pass through behind the the gauges but um that that really is somewhat inconsequential how that all all um ties in basically each sensor has like a pair of feeds to it in the boost the boost um gauge has a little switch under the hood that I'll show a little later and then the fuel pressure has a sensor under the hood same and then this uh, wideband has uh, two wires that are the out it has several wires but only two that we care about it with lightnings and so um, basically what I did to to do this is um, down here um, this is called an oh, let me turn on my light here basically this is called an adifuse right here and so I um, basically took, and what it does is it uses that, that spot in the power source that's there. And the 15 amp fuse is what was there, I believe. And the 5 is the one that the power comes out, it goes through this fuse, and then out on this red wire. So that red wire actually feeds back behind the dash, up through here, up behind the switch, like kind of snakes behind here, and then gets up behind here. And then I have the power going to this uh, this gauge, this gauge, and this gauge—they're all—they're all sharing the same power because there's basically 
no load on it and hence the reason also why it's on a 5 amp fuse you know there's just really nothing going on there <clears throat> then of course all these gauges need also a ground and so that's what this wire is here this is just a a ground wire that comes down and hooks onto that eyelet right there so that's the ground for that gauge set so anyway that pair of wires goes up in here and then there's a bunch of <clears throat> other wires the the sensor wires that are fed back through the dash and I'll try and get a shot of that now so now we're we're under the hood here and um, basically this <clears throat> this grommet right here is the or, um, three cables that come you know, or the sensor feeds for that triple pod setup. So one of them is right here. This this wire that goes back, anyway, it comes down and it, see how it loops into the back of that manifold right there? And when I say manifold, I mean some garbage that I picked up at Menards and made some just connections right there. That red and white and black wire right there is, or that cable setup is the boost sensor right there for that gauge so that um, is basically going from right here all the way back up into the cab then the second one right here this excuse me not that one this one right here goes back to the there's a port right there that brass port right there right there that is uh, one of the pipe thread um, attachment points on the regulator that references the uh, fuel pressure from that location. So that's where it's reading that. So that's basically pressure at the rail. So that's the second cable. And then the third one is this one right here. And you can see it's connect it has that connector right there. And basically the uh, that connector goes down to the, the mid pipe. And that's for the O2 sensor. So now... Uh, just real quick to show you where that oxygen sensor is, the actual wideband. Whoa. Basically, here's the there's the log manifold right there coming across. And it goes down, and then there is the factory location is the one that's like further in towards the truck. And then this one here is the one that I had added. I just had that added at a muffler shop. And there really isn't a whole lot of room there in between the flange right here and the cat right back there with the rib part. So anyway, what I did was I was worried that the original um, O2 would shroud, like the upstream one would shroud the one that I added, which is the one in the middle of the screen. So what I did was I removed the factory O2, the narrow band, and moved it downstream, and then I put the <laughs> the fact like the wide band one up front. So the one on the left of the screen is the original location, and that has my new wide band in it. And the one on the right of the screen is the new location, and it has the original O2 in it. <laughs> so kind of a weird thing, but anyway, that's how that's set up. So now I basically covered how. Each of these sensors gets power, that's from the Adafuse, and then all of the sensor reports, like how it actually gets the information that it needs, the, the voltages that it needs, is through that little grommet through the firewall. That's how the, <clears throat> the gauges receive um, their inputs. The output of the boost, no one cares about that, it's not going anywhere. The output of the fuel pressure, no one cares about, it's not getting logged, but we do log the air-fuel ratio um, outputs of this guy and so um, real quick I'm just gonna flip over to the wiring diagram and explain how that's set up okay so I have the uh, AM 30-0300 um, instruction manual hopefully on the screen here <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna turn out but anyway um, first page doesn't really mean anything important to us today but the second page if you go back here and you look at the wiring diagram, first you'll see the red wire. Um, that's the positive. That's the ignition switch ground. That's the the add -a fuse that uh, that is there. The black from the gauge is going to be the ground. We all get how that works. That's the one that was grounded. I showed that. The blue serial TX is not one that's used. The white analog positive. That's the one that is the most important. That is going to be the output of the um, wideband and that's the one that needs to be fed into the fire it's called a fire wire 
and that goes to the SCT X whatever device that you have, whichever XCT or, or SCT or Diablo or I don't know whatever you're going to use. But when you use a FireWire, this white positive analog is the wire that you need. That's the output. Normally, um, you know, basically with any sensor, it has two wires usually, you know, unless it's grounded. Basically, you need voltage. And the brown, the negative wire, um, would normally be um, connected or could be connected, but I'll show you how we get around that a little later. But um, the brown and the white, both of those wires are the ones we care about. The green, black, we don't care about. The white, black, we don't care about. That's for a different connection interface. So anyway, that's really the only things you need to know. You need to know your red, black, and your white, brown. Those are the only wires that you really need. So we're back here, um, kind of underneath the dash of the truck. Um, there's the steering wheel. So we climbed down under here. Excuse the mess, but... Anyway, so this is that cable that comes down with all of the different colors inside of it. All the ones we were just talking about that matter. Some of them matter and some of them don't matter. And what I did is I, up top, up by the gauge, I actually pulled the red and the black out because those were getting hooked up up top. So I didn't, didn't need those. Those are already hooked up way up top. But the rest of them come down here. So the two wires we needed were the white, that's this one right here, and the brown right here. So this is the positive coming from the sender, and this is the negative. The, ne the negative is hooked up via this little piece of wire, again, back to this, to this uh, grounding terminal there. And so the reason I hooked this up this way is so that when I go to log this, um, the signal is going through. In this case, this is, this is the fire wire, so anything... From this red connector downstream is considered the fire wire. Anything in this black cable going up is not the fire wire <laughs> that came from the uh, the gauge setup. So anyway, when I when I am driving this truck normally and I'm not data logging and I'm this is like a normal everyday deal, I unplug this right here. This is just a little spade connector, just really crappy like. I unplug this and I unplug that mess right there. All that goes away. Excuse my kids. Uh, pick up there um, anyway this all gets disconnected and then this part of it gets tucked up under the dash so nobody even knows it's there so it looks really nice and I don't have that ugly thing around because I just don't like the look of that I it really so serves no purpose um, in my eyes unless you're monitoring your IATs but um, there are other ways to go about that so forget all that so so basically this is your fire wire so inside sct software you need to set this red wire to tell to tell basically that cons that little head unit thing the little uh, programmer which wire you're looking at because i mean you could pick i think the red or the orange or maybe these other ones but for sure these two i think you can get at so anyway that's how this is set up that's how it's wired up i hope i did a good job of kind of showing how that works so now we've got our signal when this truck is running there's voltage getting put down this line a positive voltage and normally we would have to take this ground and go through this line to get both of them there but this this rat's nest thing plugs into your obd obd port while you're doing this okay that's what gives it power so that it actually turns on that's what turns this on see it's turning on right now so it actually gets a ground through this. So basically the two wires, you need two wires for any like type of logging or circuit or something. You need two, um, you need a voltage difference is what you need. And here's the red wire is the positive and the ground is coming through here. So that's basically the really long crappy way of explaining it. But I just figured people would like to know that. So I have my, uh, my Xbox uh, charging <laughs> cord here because it's a nice long USB. So um, basically, all you have here is you have that rat's nest abomination, and then it goes through this tangled mess all the way to this USB cord. <clears throat> and now we have the signal from the truck, the air-fuel ratio, in a USB. And so that is the next step. Now we just all we have to do is plug this into um, the computer, but at least this is how you set up a, or one way to set up a uh, fire wire setup with an X4. So anyway, that was probably a really boring video and maybe some of you guys know how to do it, but uh, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, 
that's uh, that's one way to do this. I'm going to hook the laptop up in the probably the next video and just kind of show how we actually log something. How do you set up a log? How do you even do this? Because um, I am a sure noob and uh, I did not know how to do any of this. So anyway, thanks for watching.